Hello and welcome to another edition of Nash Incorporated Reviews. Sonic the freaking Hedgehog. <laughs> what can you say about him? The Blue Speedster, faster than the speed of sound. Sonic the Hedgehog is arguably one of the most famous video game characters of all time, right up there with Mario, Pac-Man and Solid Snake. Sonic first shot to fame on the Genesis with his fast-paced gameplay. Rather than carefully timed jumps like in Mario, Sonic was about getting to the finish line in the fastest possible time. Not that that was to say that Sonic was without those moments where he had to stop and plan ahead. After Sonic won, Sega decided to make Sonic their official mascot, replacing another one of my favourite game characters, Alex Kidd. Which I'm, uh, I'm still kinda, you know, bitter about, but, oh well, you know, oh well. Sega then went on to make Sonic the Hedgehog a success, with many great games. But somewhere along the line, Sonic fell from grace, making some truly mediocre games. Where exactly did it go wrong for the Blue Hedgehog? Was it the 3D Sonic games that so many people seem to think it is? Is it that Sonic was always doomed to fail? Are we just too harsh on Sonic? Well, in a new series called The Rise and Fall of Sonic the Hedgehog, I hope to uncover where exactly Sonic fell from grace. Well, how can it possibly fail? Well, let's review The Rise and Fall of Sonic the Hedgehog. Imagine it's 1991, you just became the proud owner of the new hot console, the Genesis. You're bursting with excitement, ready to play this brand new game that everybody's been talking about. And for just one second, a brief moment of darkness, the Sega logo appears. Sega! And that damn Sega logo makes you go deaf. Oh, I should also point out that I'm going to be using the Sonic the Hedgehog tenor, Mega yeah. Collection Plus and Sonic Gems Collection for yeah. this review. Hello. I'm going to be using these because it's simply for time's sake. So please don't comment saying, It's for time's sake. That's why I'm oh, not using the original tenor? games. So please understand. And I hope you enjoy the review anyway. Sega logo. This is Sonic the Hedgehog, a big revolution in gaming. You watch that little blue hedgehog wave his finger in front of your face. Actually, why does he do that in the first place? Doesn't that indicate that you shouldn't be doing something? Shouldn't be playing the game? Well, anyway, first off is the Green Hill Zone, and then, by god, you saw what the Genesis could really do at the time. This game just looked so damn stunning, it was unbelievable. And I'm not talking about the backgrounds or the enemies or even the colours to make it look pretty. No, I'm talking about Sonic's animation. It looks incredible. The way that he walks, the way that he runs, the way that he even falls looks incredible. All of this combined with some great and rather fun level design made Sonic 1 an instant and memorable classic. Now, was Sonic 1 a perfect game? No, of course not. No game is perfect. But rather than drawing up a huge list, here's three main reasons why Sonic 1 just wasn't quite perfect. First off, and this only goes to European gamers only, but the game was much slower than the North American version. According to Wikipedia, it's around 83%. Now this was due to the refresh rates, which I can kind of understand, but in the re-releases they didn't actually put it to its full speed. Second are the bonus stages. Okay, they're not horrible, but they are annoying. It can be sometimes hard to move, the background makes me feel like I'm having a seizure, 
and that music just drawings on. Yeah. But what's the most annoying thing about this game? The Labyrinth Stage. I hate this stage. Keeping in mind that the Yo version is slower, imagine travelling through water at this rate. It takes ages. It makes an already tedious thing even more tedious. But by far the most annoying thing in this stage is waiting for the air bubbles. I mean, look! Come on! There we go. Oh, come on! Not this again! Ah, well, I'll just... Oh, you sneaky bastard! So if there's a good guy, then there has to be a bad guy, and that's where the Sonic games provided one of the most memorable villains of all time, Dr. Robotnik. And yes, I know that he's now called Dr. Eggman and was always called Dr. Eggman in Japan, but... Dr. Robotnik is better. Dr. Robotnik acted as the end boss before the end of each level in Sonic 1. While I can't say he was exactly tough to be, it was always good to watch the Eggmobile blow up in his smug face. However, the Labyrinth Zone was once again a pain in the arse. I can't really call it a boss because it's more of a race to the top before you drown. It's annoying to say the least. What's kind of cool about Robotnik is his comedy factor. Taking his outrageous and goofy appearance for one thing, another is the way he acts like a typical James Bond villain. In fact, he's more like a kid who's playing a typical James Bond villain. He's also a super genius, always making good use of the things that he finds. Things that the everyday but that's not to say that Dr. Robotnik wasn't evil. Oh no, so this guy was balls to the walls crazy. You wanna know how crazy this guy gets? Uh, well, just, just watch this. At the end of Zone 6 Act 2, you're just waiting for the score to be tallied up and the screen to go black, indicating that you're going to the final round. Or oh, so you think. All of a sudden you're in control of Sonic again, Dr. Robonic appears, he's got a switch. Oh dear, he presses it, the bridge, it starts to collapse, no way to escape, you're falling down, and, and, he transports you to another labyrinth zone. Ooh, that, that, bad, bad man.